We are Man vs. Meeple, and for May 15th through May 28th, 2017, this is What's Next. Welcome back to What's Next, the bi-weekly show where David and I walk you through all the games coming out to your friendly local gaming store. This is probably the most astounding week of releases that we've had so far. I know we say that almost every week or something along those lines, but this is insane this week. Yeah, every single one of these titles is a big heavy hitter. And one of our, you know... And a game that we thoroughly enjoy right. and have played uh, personally. So we're going to start off at number five, David. What do you have? <clears throat> number five is Sagrada. And this is from Floodgate Games. It's a one-to-four player game. Takes about 40 minutes. Very quick playing. This is a dice drafting game, and we reviewed this thing. It is one of the most beautiful games to come out so far this yeah. year. It's got these beautiful, colorful dice. You're rolling them each turn. Everyone's drafting them. The cool thing is the components are equally as beautiful as the dice you've got these stained glass windows that you're filling and it's this amazing sort of puzzle solving aspect where you're taking the dice and it's really tricky as you place these things because you have to place certain colors on certain spots certain numbers on certain spots and you there's some rules there that get a little a little tricky as you play and and tricky in a really good way you're you're fulfilling sort of objectives everyone has a private objective like i said 40 minutes plays really fast very very good intro to dice drafting with a little bit of meat for and sure really kind of uh, bridges the gap between casual game and kind of a competitive game as well. For sure. Yeah. For sure. I have number four. This is called Honshu. It's by Renegade Games. It plays two to five players in about 30 minutes. Uh, you are in feudal Japan. You're placing cards in front of you in a map style building a kind of a tableau of cards. Uh-huh. And each of these cards has six different regions in them. You have forests and cities and lakes and deserts. Each of them give you different amount of points at the end of the game. It's also got a really cool turn uh, order system in it. By placing certain cards, you get to go first or last, which allows you to draft certain cards into your huh. city. Fantastic game. I, you haven't played it yet. You I haven't played it, not you? I really want to. You, you've told me that I'd really like it, so I definitely want to get that it's to the really table good. for sure. I've got number three, and it's Yokohama. Special game for us, right? Yeah, it is. It's the first game that we reviewed here on Man vs. Meeple. Uh, it's finally shipped to backers. It's coming to retail uh, right now. This game is... A lot of people look at this and say it's Istanbul, like, cranked up to 10. Yeah. And I would agree, although it's much different and better in some respects. The variable setup, like Istanbul, is significant. Not only are you laying out the tiles in a different in a different manner, but there's different aspects that go on those tiles as well. So to back up for a second, this is basically set in the Meiji era of Yokohama where it's sort of transitioning from a fishing village mm-hmm. to a more industrial age, you know, becoming the real big trade center that it became. And your movement on the board here is what's interesting. You have a president and some assistants. You have to sort of string out the assistants to kind of make your network because that's how your president has to move. You have to move through your assistants. And then when you land on any individual tile, you can collect a bunch of assistants with, along with your president and really activate the, tau- the, the power on sort of like one to five different levels, if you will. Yeah. And it's... You know, basically a, a trading game where you're you're getting as many points as possible from a, a lot of different ways. Uh, there's other tiles on the board where you can sort of, it brings in that industrial age where there's technologies that you can add to sort of make your uh, business quite a bit better than your, your opponents. And this is a game that's definitely, if you guys have watched our channel before, you know the type of gamers that David and I are. This is one of the heavier, it, it's definitely higher than a medium weight Euro yeah, yeah, style game. for sure. Got some heavy components to it. Uh, great game. We, we both absolutely love Yokohama. Uh, number two, we've done a review of this one. Just? You love Bruno Catala. Oh, uh, yeah. I like him a lot. In my opinion, Yamatai is a better game than Five Tribes. I know you probably think opposite. They're close. I They're love close. this game this is set again in japan yes this is the third game we have in japan it's two to four players plays in about 60 to 90 minutes it is kind of a route building game with a unique twist that each of the players are contributing to that route you're getting special powers and acting those special powers you're placing boats gathering boats and enacting all these different things up on the board by building buildings and getting points at the end for the things that you construct. Yeah, I think a lot like Five Tribes, it's hard to put this one in a, into a category. Mm-hmm. You know, we were talking about this before the show, like, what kind of game is Yamatai? Because yeah. just like Five Tribes, there's really no other game quite like that. Yeah. Uh, but it's 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 pure Bruno Catala through and through, for sure. We both love the game. Go check out our review if you guys are interested in seeing more about Yamatai. 
Number one? I've got number one, and I gotta say, I'm thinking about this list right now, and it is an insane mm-hmm. list, and it's capped off this week with Lorenzo Il Magnifico. Uh, this one is two to four players. Uh, it says about 120 minutes, uh, although you can play it more quickly than that Absolutely. if you're a seasoned player. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one's coming from Simon. They are bringing this out over here, which I'm super excited about. Uh, we just had a chance to play it again uh, at their event. Mm-hmm. This thing is Euro through and through. Yeah. You know, it has a lot of the same sort of themes you'd expect. You're part of a noble family uh, collecting points in many, many different ways. It's a worker placement game, which I know is My one of your favorites, yeah. also one of mine. The interesting thing here is the family members of, in your noble family you have are significantly variable mm-hmm. because you're rolling dice at the beginning of the round. Those dice are uh, associated with each of your three family members. And they're shared, too. And they're you? shared. So everyone is dealing with the same sort of situation in terms of how powerful your workers are on right. any given round because they can be very powerful if you roll well or high mm-hmm. uh, or, or, or less so if you roll low. Uh, but it's really good because rolling low isn't necessarily bad. And then there's one worker who's sort of sort of the the, uh, the stepchild yeah. of the family, <laughs> if you will, who's always a zero. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of interesting worker uh, placement rules yeah. where you can and can't go. Brilliant game. This yeah. is from the same guys who did Grand Austria Hotel and uh, Vo- which is one of Egizia, my favorites. Yeah. Voyages of Marco Polo. Unlike all of those games. But so similar in many respects, yeah. you'll definitely see the DNA from those games in this one. Yeah, and if you're a fan of all the Euro-style artwork, such as Agricola, uh, this one has Clement Franz on it as well. Yeah. One of my favorite Euro artists, period. I love his art style. One of my favorite games of last year as well. Absolutely. All right. It is time for the Friendly Rolling Game yes. Store. What do you have this week? This week we have Black Moon Games from Lebanon, New Hampshire. Uh, I, my, my sister lives in New Hampshire, although I've never been to this, this game store before. It sounds like they pull in a lot of people from the whole New England area. I mean, New England's not a giant space, so right. uh, I, I imagine game stores can do that. They've been around for about three years. Uh, they, they have a... I know we've talked about a lot of friendly local game stores with their events. Mm-hmm. This place sounds like their event calendar is jam-packed. Literally every single night they have something going on, ranging from magic to... Uh, miniatures to Dungeons and Dragons, uh, board game. They have a board game night, so they're doing basically Wide game everything. Things, yeah. And they have a rental system, and this rental system is not in store. You can actually take a game I love home that idea. Yeah. and try it out. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, it'd be interesting to see the, these things probably have varied results, but it seems to be working for them. They get people coming back who like a game and then end up buying it. Yeah. And I, you know, I think that's the way to go if you can. Uh, they also participate really heavily, and I'm sure a lot of stores do this, but uh, uh, many of them haven't said this, in the sort of con scene. Mm-hmm. So he actually goes out as a vendor to a lot of the at least local cons and, and beyond to sell some of his products as well. So if you're ever out there at a con in the New England area, look for uh, our friends at Black Moon Games because they'll probably be there selling some games. Yeah, make sure you guys go to your friendly local gaming store, support these stores. This is a giant list this week. Go pre-order these games as they come out. Every one Uh, of those games. Hopefully you guys have saved up because this is quite the list of games this week. If you guys have any questions, make them in the comments below. Come back in two weeks. And, of course, check the ticker below. We have all the games coming out to your friendly local gaming store. Uh, subscribe to us, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, everything else we do. Come back in two weeks for what's next, and we will catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.